Got to eat my Lucky Charms this morning because we're going to Ireland. We're driving back to Dublin and if you can see right there, the sun is about ready to set. So we are driving as fast as we can to get to the wonderful barn. It's just this crazy shaped kind of silo of a building. And so we're hoping we can get there by sunset. Fingers crossed again. Still stuck in traffic, hoping to get there and just watching incredible full rainbows out there and amazing light out there. I hate traffic. We tried to get here at this awesome location, the wonderful barn, in time for sunset, but we missed it. And so we got kind of a grab shot and I was just ready to leave and I thought, you know what, maybe I better take a little bit more time. So I tried to come find a cooler angle uh, and we, I, it's a much more interesting angle, but still the photo was just lacking interest and a little bit of pizzazz. So I decided to do some light painting on the, on the barn. The trick to light painting is angles. Angles is everything for any type of lighting. Just like in flash photography, we'd never use the on-camera flash and just blast the subject. It just doesn't look good. It certainly doesn't look professional. And so with light painting, when I go out and I do light painting with others, every time they're like, light painting, let's do this. Stand right behind the camera and you just blast on-camera flash, just a flat wall of light onto the subject. So this is what the barn looks like with no light painting at all. And this is what a bad light painting looks like, where you just have the wall of light hitting everything. If you've tried light painting before and didn't have success, my guess is that's probably why. So let me show you some of the things that I've learned about light painting and how you can make a good one. The first thing is, start your, well, the first thing is, know that you're going to have to take several photos to get it right because you're gonna stand in different areas and light each piece of the light painting differently. So for the first picture, you may actually want to stand behind the camera and just paint a little fill light, um, just so that everything, you have some even, because everything else could be a little bit too much texture and highlight and shadow. So for some of the frames, I stood behind the camera and I spent maybe five seconds of a 30 second exposure just waving all the way around to get a general light. And then as soon as I got that, I run over to the side, come with me here, um, and we painted each different part. So look at this. This could be hard to see with the video light that may hit it. We're gonna try though. Um, if I stand to the side and I paint light on the wall here, you'll see awesome texture. See that texture of highlight and shadow? But then if I come to the camera angle and I do the same thing, all the texture is completely gone. That's the whole point of light painting. That's how you make a good one, is you come to interesting angles to create highlight, shadow, and texture instead of just on-camera flash done with the flashlight. So I painted this panel first, standing here. Now one trick is, if I stand here, obviously this side of the wall is going to be bright and the far side of the wall away from me is going to be dark. So I'll paint over far away from me for a longer time, a longer time over there, and as I get close to me, the light is brighter here, so I spend a little bit less time on the close area. So you just got to remember that light is falling off very quickly. It's the inverse square rule that uh, every time the distance doubles, your light roughly cuts in half. And so you want to spend more time on areas further away, less time on areas close. So we'll take one exposure just for this facade right here. Then we'll do another exposure and uh, with the light in a different area. So I'm setting up the camera, 30 second exposure, F11, ISO 400 for this situation. So we got one here. The cool thing about light painting is you want it to look weird, different, interesting, um, but not too weird that it just looks like a psychotic light painting. But one thing that can give it that cool look 
is where the light is not all coming from the same angle. This is something that's impossible during the day, right? You can't have multiple suns. And um, so we'll do one light coming from that direction on the wall. And then we'll do another light down on the ground to get the grass. Look at this grass. Look when I just shine flat on it. It's not interesting at all. But when I come down low, you see all those cool uh, highlights and shadows and all that interesting detail. That's what we're going for with light painting. That's taking advantage of the night to control everything. And you'll notice we had one light source coming from this way. This light source was coming from this way. So when you look at the photo, you're just like, you don't know why, but you look at it and it's really captivating and interesting. And that's why we never see that. We never see light sources coming from opposing directions. Now, the other thing is you have to be careful as you're doing these that like if I'm doing the grass up next to the house, my light is spilling onto the house. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my hand and I'm going to uh, block off that light so that it doesn't hit the hand or spill onto areas that we don't want it to. That's really only important when you're light painting in a group with other people and you have more flashlights moving around because in the end we're going to take all these separate pictures and we're going to mask them together in Photoshop to make one. There's one more principle I want to show you and that's on the actual barn. So with flash photography when you, take, um, when you take a small light source and you shoot it at somebody, you're going to get uh, just a hard line between highlight and shadow. It's a hard light, not a bright or a dark light, but a hard light. It means it goes from highlight to shadow quickly, like the shadow of my hand on the ground. That's a hard light source. So check this out. The flash is far away from my hand right now, about four feet away. Look at that shadow of highlight and sh and uh, shadow, how it's a perfect line of my hand. And then watch what happens. I'm bringing the flash closer and closer and closer to my hand now. And look at the edges of the fingers. Can you see how they're blurring out more? It's a, now a softer transition from highlight to shadow. See hard line, hard edges, softer edges. And that is exactly why we use umbrellas and soft boxes and all those things in flash photography to spread out the light. Okay, same thing with light painting. If I, oh, the barn's over here. <laughs> Didn't walk quite far enough. If when I'm light painting, I stand in exactly one spot as I'm doing the painting, then the light is going to be hard. And sometimes that's what we want, like where we wanted to bring out the texture on the side of that wall. We wanted hard light. But if you do want softer light, like on the edge of this barn, it wraps around. Um, so here, remembering the camera is far away from us, it's at a different angle. So what I'll do is I'll start painting here and then I'll physically move a little bit over to the side. And what's that going to do? It means because the camera is recording for 30 seconds. So the camera saw light from here and from over here and it's worth spreading out the light. You can control how hard or soft your light is just by physically moving during the light painting. That's it. That's how we do light painting. We're going to get all of these different exposures now. Uh, we took about five different exposures. We're just going to layer them in Photoshop. And there are two different ways you can do this. The way that I usually prefer to do it is just layer them all up and I'll name each layer according to what it is. So I'll name one layer grass, another one right facade, middle, etc. And then I'll just fit, put a mask on it and I'll use black paint and I'll just paint out all of the areas that I don't want in the image. And then on the very bottom, I'll have that, um, that layer that has the fill light where I just kind of got everything pretty evenly because if once we have these light, pan light panels everywhere, it's going to look a little too weird. And so by having more of those fill light frames in there, then we can uh, change the opacity of that fill layer to make everything look interesting, but not super weird. So that's it. That's light painting. Uh, hopefully you gained some kind of pro tips here and we got an amazing shot from it. Thanks everybody.